G'day, just sitting out here, having a beer in my boat, pretty much just avoiding jobs that I should be doing on an afternoon. So it's been a few weeks, probably a month actually, since I did one of these videos. I said I was going to kind of do them regularly, but I um, got sidetracked. As you guys all know, the boat was out of the water for a while with a fuel tank issue. Um, didn't see that one coming, but it happens. Fuel tank is back in. It's all uh, under the floor now. I didn't really film putting it back in because I was in such a rush to get it in. Um, I got it back and I was so frothing to get back out the next day that I just sort of rushed it in um, Screwed all the floor back in and then I forgot to take any photos or any video of it um, It's only a boring fuel tank, so you didn't really miss much But the the new one that got built is um, a much tougher unit It's got a lot more baffles in it a lot thicker gauge um, aluminium and uh, Just a much better unit all over. It's in it's not leaking. I don't expect it to leak um, it's filled up. I've got about 250 litres in there now and it doesn't seem to be sloshing. I haven't smelt fuel yet, so all good. I've been using the boat the last couple of weeks and haven't had any issues with it at all. At all. So while I'm here, oh, by the way, Soulfix t-shirts. Jump on soulfixfishing.com if you want Soulfix shirts. While I'm here, I thought it was time I announced the winner of our Boomer Anchor competition. So the Boomer Anchor goes to, brrr, drum roll, Jason Evans. Uh, Jason Evans, I'll try to get in contact with you a bit later on. Um, I was going to actually do like one of these online um, random generator things, but when I realized the competition rules where you had to comment on YouTube and comment on the Boom Rankers Facebook page, I realized how difficult it was to do that random generator. And also a lot of people commented on one but not the other. So I, um, we went through the through the names and um, scrolled through the ones that did both. It actually took quite a bit of time, but the ones that commented on Facebook and commented on the Boomer Anchor Facebook page, which was the competition rules, put them all in a hat and did the old-fashioned way, pulled a piece of paper out of the hat. And Jason Evans, you are the man. So brand new Boomer Anchor. There it is in the box down there, mate. Coming your way. And if I'm honest, this is your stubby holder, Jason. <laughs> I jumped up in the boat without a stubby holder and I thought, oh, I'll just grab the one out of the box. So, yep, I'm using your stubby holder today, but I'll make sure it's dry when it goes back in the box and comes to you anyway. So, well done, Jason. Good job, mate. Um, I'll show you something else here. So, this is my nice new fly rod that I bought a couple of weeks ago. Extreme nine foot, seven weight fly rod. Look, I don't claim to be a fly fisher. Look at me, I'm sitting down on the floor again. I've got these beautiful seats and I always end up sitting on the floor. Um, I don't claim to be a fly fisherman at all, as I've probably stated in many of my videos, but I do like to dabble because it's just a bit of fun and there's nothing like hearing that fly line getting ripped off at 100 miles an hour and um, trying to wind a fish back in with a one-to-one -one retrieve is just, it's ridiculous, it's stupid, but it's a whole lot of fun and you know, you, I'm probably going to lose more fish than I catch to be honest, but it's all part of the fun. So. My old fly rod was getting on for over 20 years old. I bought it when I was just a young sprat and um, it had been around. The guides and the um, bindings were all starting to crack and break and it lost a bit off the tip from getting stuck in the cart all years ago. So I bought this new one. It's only a um, cheap one. Max Catch, it was called, off of um, eBay. Um, matches the, the reel I bought there not that long ago as well. Um, got the whole lot. I think it was only like 70 bucks off of eBay. It's a four piece, nine footer, seven weight. So I was all frothed up to use my new fly rod and get into some kingfish. Went out on the weekend, as you probably saw in the past video. I hooked something really big on it in the morning while we we're at, anchored up at Burley and, um, yeah, and ended up getting stitched in the reef because I just couldn't stop it. So what I'd done is we were traveling because uh, we were sort of moving in and I wanted the, the fly rod all rigged up. Because anyone that's ever used a fly rod before will know you got to have line stripped out, you got to have the fly out, and um, you know, a bit of line to work with before you can just pick it up and cast. You can't just pick up and cast the fly rod, you got to have it all ready to go. So I had it all laid out, all ready to go, and what I'd done with it is I'd stuck it in this side pocket in here, like this. And oh, now the fly's hooked the carpet, nearly spilt my beer there. So she was all rigged up in here. I had a bit of spare fly line, um, just laid in loose coils inside the side pocket here, ready to go. The fly was actually hanging out the back. Um, the, the fly was actually just sort of inside the in the in the thing here, with a bit of fly line out the out the tip, ready to go. And I had it leaning on the back here. And obviously, what's happened is as we've been travelling, as we've been travelling with the fly rod just sort of stuck in this gap here, 
it's just got caught in this little gap and um as soon as I've, as soon as the kingfish were busting up and uh it was time to cast i picked up the fly rod and crack it just broke in my hand so my shot a, a kingfish on fly went straight out the window and so did my new fly rod so um a brand new fly rod i got one run on it and then i broke it beforehand so i've ordered another one on ebay just chucked another one on ebay 70 bucks whatever it's on its way now so it'll be probably a couple of few weeks away everything's going with COVID at the moment but the new fly rod's on the way and i'll have to come up with a better plan because um, yeah, like I said with the fly rod, if you're gonna just sort of want to have it ready to go, you need to have line stripped out and you need to have it all ready and built up ready to go. This is a four piece. I don't want to have to mess around, put it together, stripping line and everything, just to get a shot of the fish. It needs to be ready to go. So I'll have to come up with a better plan than leaving in that little gap down there. So I'm not sure what I'll work out. Um, my last fly rod actually put a bit of a butt on it so I could stick it in a rod holder to store it, just to make it a lot easier for that sort of thing don't really want to put a butt on this one but if that's what i have to do to make it easier then that's what i will do um so another thing i'll just quickly show you here is this transom so i'm going to be 100 percent honest with you here one of the things i didn't like about this boat when i bought when i was looking at these boats um one of the very one of the things i really didn't like was this whole pod setup i wasn't a big fan of the pod i'd always been a fan of having an engine well and um being able to fish right into the back corner of the boat it was always just something that i'd um i don't know i guess all my boats had been that way and it was just something i liked wasn't a big fan of the pod but after i rode in it and i liked the way it um added the extra buoyancy to the back and so forth i thought look it's not that bad it's easy enough to climb out and um if you need to work your fish around the outboard you can easily climb out on the pod here and um work your fish and whatever now i've had this boat for a while and i've been using it i've really started to appreciate the pod more and more the extra flotation in the back of the boat a just keeps the boat um, up on top of the water so it jumps onto a plane like it's almost planing standing still it launches onto the plane no problems at all but what i've noticed is when you're reversing into chop and so forth just these extra buoyancy in the back the back doesn't dip down if it does take waves over the back they're coming up here they're hitting there and they're rolling back down not a drop is coming over the back of the actual transom itself um, sometimes with engine wells it'll, it'll slosh into the well and slosh around and slosh into the boat with this thing it just sloshes up onto here and runs straight back off doesn't even look like coming over the top here at all um, really good if, if there's a lot of slop and a lot of chop coming in from the back of the boat um, if you're reversing into the chop or if you're sort of drifting and, and um, you've got it in reverse and the chops sloshing over the back this is awesome another thing i'm really liking is this storage in here i've got my fenders in here as you can see um, it's a massive big cabin in there perfect for storing stuff in it's out of the way i put my bow rope in there my fenders everything's stored in there out of the way another thing i've been using it for is this here um, this is just a cheap fish bag i've actually got a bigger one sometimes we use the bigger one but sometimes we use a smaller one so all i'm doing here is i've just got a couple of cheap straps and bunnings they go around the bait table either side like that and the bag sits out here on the transom totally out of the way of everyone that's not inside the boat you can fill it up with ice you can leave the drain hole open and it just sits up here on the transom if it drains out it drains straight straight onto the top of the pod and over the side and it's not causing anyone any problems and it's out of the way and you're not tripping over it the whole time you're fishing so it's awesome for that as well and um while i'm here i'll just show you this barely pot too this barely pot i looked at quite a few barely pots when i was building this boat and i've got a, a i made a, an old aluminium one on the other boat so i had that one for quite a few years and it was on three or four different boats um, until one day when jack lost it over the side <laughs> he felt so terrible that he went out the next day and got a bit of aluminium tube and um had his welder at work weld me up a new one so that one's on there and that worked really well um, when i was looking at it for this boat i was actually going to get a teflon one and some of the plastic ones you can get i looked online some of the chandleries and so forth and i could see a couple that looked all right but um when i started speaking about alan on the boat he goes no you're not putting that ugly thing on the back of this beautiful boat and then i saw this beautiful stainless steel one here from viper um pretty cool looking pot and i said straight away right i i gotta get that i need that one because it just looks horny let's face it um 
great in theory. The one thing I did notice about it is this. It's really noisy. Um, might not be a big issue to a lot of people, but for us with our um, fishing for snapper inshore, noise is quite a big factor for us and we like things to be quiet. So what I've done is I've actually just, it's a bit of a dodgy fix just to see how it works. I've actually just pop riveted some bits of um, Teflon onto the bottom of the onto the bottom of the muncher here now. And that's really quietened it down to just their basic munching. You can hear the difference between the Teflon and the handle of the thing hitting the side. So if you just want to do a quiet munch, it's actually nowhere near as bad as what it was. So that's just a small mod I've done recently. I don't know, it's it's rough as guts as you can see. It's just basically to see how it goes. If it works well, then I'll come up with a better plan. I might even change the whole muncher. I was thinking of just moving away from this stainless handle altogether and going to a wooden one and um, having something more like a, like a mashed potato masher, something a bit more quieter, made of Teflon and wood maybe that just quietens the whole thing down. The actual pot itself is not gonna be so important. It's more about the, more about the masher. But you know, these small things you just don't learn until you start using the boat and you start figuring things out. So that's just done another little thing. So I've dribbled on enough for one afternoon anyway. That's probably it, just a short video. I've showed you my fly rod. I showed you my transom. I'm actually really, like I said, I'm really happy with the pod. The amount of times that um, I've never actually pulled this thing out, oh, a couple of times when I've had the wife and the kids on board, but essentially we just step over it. It's, it's really easy to step over it. You're out on the pod. You can fish out around the motor. No problems at all. And um, it's really easy to step through and just access the whole boat like this. So, um, yeah, it just goes to show you, for something I thought I didn't like to start off with, um, after I've used it, I really like it now. And um, the extra flotation that it adds is just really cool. We fish in, you guys watch our videos, you see us fishing in some really sloppy conditions in amongst those reefs and everything like that. And um, there's a lot of times when the easterly's blowing us backwards onto the reef and the swell and the whitewash is breaking towards the back of the boat um, a nightmare you don't want waves hitting the back of your boat at any stage but um, with this pod it just floats up and over it doesn't even look like dipping or waves coming over the top because the waves are actually hitting the boat way back behind the transom where the pod starts it's already started to lift long before any wave or anything actually hits the transom itself and looks like coming over the back. So yeah, big fan of it to be honest. After um, I thought I wasn't gonna like it, it just goes to show you, you can learn to like things. And um, I really, I'm really, i a big fan of the pod now and probably on future boats would go for something similar as well. Um, so that's it for this video. Um, just a short one today and I'll talk to you again maybe next week and I'll discuss rod storage options because that's something else I've still got to work on. Until then, uh, good luck to you Jason Evans. I'll get in touch with you mate about the anchor and I'll see you all in the next episode. Thanks for watching.